One step forward and another back I will never try to fool ya I'm one heartbeat away from going mad Girl, when you look like that Close up, close up Hello, welcome back to being Mrs. Frazier, or welcome if you are new. If you are new, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, come along and join my YouTube family. Also, a huge shout out to Boutique Rugs for partnering with me on today's video, but we will get into that in a little while. I had a idea. <laughs> um, this idea actually has been in my head for a very long time, probably from scrolling on Pinterest, um, but I really wanted a brick wall in my living room. So today's the day that that's happening. We went ahead and picked up some faux brick panels from our local hardware store. Um, I'm sure you can find them at your local store as well. And we're basically just cutting them down to size. Now, I will say we did start out um, because everywhere I saw online said to blend and mesh them together. That way they looked seamless. Uh, and we did start out with that. Shout out to my hubby for teaching me how to use a jigsaw um, and always getting roped into these projects of mine, my bright ideas, uh, I can tell you. Um, and being that this is his birthday weekend and this is what he spent doing was making me happy. So shout out to him. Um, but as you see, we're getting ready to put on the first panel and you can see that we cut out the half bricks. Now, that is how everybody on the internet said to do it. Um, and then you go and piece and piece it together kind of like a puzzle, I guess, if you will. Um, yeah, it did not go that way. Uh, it did not go easily that way, I should say. We ended up putting this panel up. We used um, some like glue, wall glue, our paneling glue, and then we just used the nail gun to ad finish adhering it to the wall. Um, and as you can see here, we're struggling. It looks like it fits together from the camera angle, but it doesn't. It was... It was a huge ordeal. I tell you what, if you can figure out how to put those together, good luck. Good good for you because we could not get it right. Um, so we ended up doing it the easy way and just putting a panel up. Um, it was much easier <laughs> going this route as you can tell. tell. We, we just glued it on, nailed it on, and then um, we ended up cutting the little cutout pieces off the other panels and found a way to just put them up on the wall. As you can tell in the background, it is now nighttime. What I thought was going to be like a two-hour project turned into a two-day project. Oh my goodness, I felt so bad that it was taking so long and that it was just getting so frustrating. I, oh, it, it was just a pain, you guys. Um, again, you can see us here trying to decide how we're going to fix this problem and come up with a solution. 
but there you see it we did I like I said we just cut off the little slices or the little pieces that we had cut out and then fit everything back on the wall so the next day I did pick up some um, all-purpose uh, joint compound and I went ahead and used a putty knife and basically I just put it into the horizontal cracks and then went back through and slid the putty knife across the brick to kind of pick it up. I wanted it to be heavy, like, like heavily covered, but I didn't want it to fully cover the brick. I really wanted to see some of that red pop through. Um, I'll show you a close up here in just a minute so you can kind of get a better idea of how I'm applying this joint compound. I did go ahead and try to blend the seams with the joint compound. Um, I mean, you can see it here. And honestly, you can kind of see it on the finished wall, but with decor and everything put back up on the wall, you really can't see it. It, it blends in pretty good. Um, if you guys wait till the end, you'll see it, the finished product. And I, I absolutely love it. I will be honest. Um, after doing all this, I woke up the next day and I was like, wow, I hate it. I feel like I am in like a pizza hut or a cheap barbecue joint. I I was just, I was so upset because not only, I mean, it cost a lot of money to do this, or it didn't cost a lot of money. I guess it depends on your perspective of a lot of money. Um, these panels run about $43, $45, um, and then the joint compound, I think, was $10 um, or $15, somewhere around there. And was it a lot of money for us? Sure. And I was so devastated because I really just did not like it but I absolutely love it now and I will tell you trust the process is such a true statement So as you can see here, I just kind of put it in those horizontal um, grooves and then took the, the blade and just scraped it straight across the brick. I Once I found my groove of doing this, it went by so much faster than when I first started. And I think it only took probably about two hours. Um, you have to realize that this wall is a pretty good sized wall. I know it's kind of hard to tell in camera, but... Again, once I got my groove of doing it, it went by super fast.
I use the, the joint compound up at the top from the top of the wall to the ceiling, but you could definitely go in with some caulk and, you know, make a streamline um, across there. Um, I actually had to cut and run to the store again and grab another little bucket of joint compound because I ran out. <laughs> Who knew? But um, if you guys want more brick, you can also go through and maybe take like a wet sponge and kind of rub off uh, or wash off a little bit of the compound on, on the brick to make more color show through. But I didn't want a whole lot of color um, because I wanted it still to be light and bright. I just wanted more of that rustic look, um, which I definitely feel like I achieved. I did get it on the edge. Again, you could take some caulking and go up the edge to join it to the wall. Um, I probably should have done that because I kind of made a mess and now I need to paint that corner again, but it's all good. So anyway, what do you guys think? Um, are you liking it so far or what are your feelings? Let me know down in the comments. Um, but we need to go ahead and get these shoe shelves put back up. Um, I've always wanted these shoe shelves up there. Again, we just took them down so we could put the brick paneling up. I'm also going to go ahead and put a piece of wood on top to kind of make them more cohesive instead of making them look like two separate pieces. Um, obviously they are two separate pieces, but I just kind of wanted to join them together. And I also wanted to bring some of the darker colors um, to this side of the room without making it, you know, too dark. said I did want the wood this is just your basic cheapest piece of wood from the lumber store um, and I'm using a dark walnut gel stain I would definitely say that this went quite darker than I expected I'm sure it's probably because I used a brush instead of a rag um, but I also after applying the gel stain and letting it sit I did apply a poly just a matte poly finish uh, just to kind of protect it if anything wet get, got set on top of it or you know things like that and then it also makes it a little bit easier to dust with that clear coat on there I like the way you're thinking I don't really care about the music on the dance floor I don't really mind all the smoke is in the bathroom I don't care at all, baby, you got my attention So you were saying oh, no. I really like using a brush when I'm staining things I feel like it's just easier and much cleaner uh, but I do see a lot of people using a rag and my mom always used a rag uh, how do you find your stain I'm curious um, what do you find easier let me know down in the comments when you're next to me
while the stain dries, we're going to go ahead and open up the artwork that I ordered. I was so excited. This actually came that day. I did not think it was going to make it here in time for the reveal, uh, but it did arrive. And again, I was so excited. I actually took this picture at the Fort Worth Stockyards. If you guys have never been, I highly, highly, highly recommend. The Longhorns at the Stockyards are just magnificent creatures and so beautiful. Um, so I went ahead and blew up the picture that I took just to focus more on the Longhorns as, a as opposed to the backgrounds. Um, and I actually love that the people's faces kind of got blurred. And you can really just see that the cattle are just right there front and center. And I absolutely love how it turned out. I love that it's basically a one of a piece or one of a kind artwork piece um, that only I have. And it definitely fits the style or the vibes that I really wanted in the living room. I do want to give a huge shout out to my followers over on Instagram. You guys are seriously amazing and getting me through this makeover. <laughs> um, I... I was really hating this wall the other day and you guys really helped me through it and I very much appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I have some of the best followers. I I, I just I love you guys so much. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. You next to when you next to when you next to me. So, when you hang things or measure anything, measure, 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 measure before you hang or drill anything into your wall. Um, yeah. That's what I say, and that's what I did, but somehow I still managed to mess it up. Um, I will say, tip from Tammy, I use a piece of tape and go from one hook to the other hook on a painting or a picture, whatever you're hanging. Um, that way you know where to put your nails, and you basically just have to make sure that that is level and where you want it on your wall. Um, and it just makes it so much easier because then you can put your your nails up and then hang your painting right then and there. And it, it, trust me, time saver. I absolutely love the, the hack. Uh, you can also use toothpaste and put to a little dab of toothpaste on the back of where the nails go, um, and then push your painting up against the wall where you are wanting to hang it. Uh, and then it leaves a little bit of toothpaste on your wall for so you know where to put the nails, and then you just wipe it away. Super easy. Um, but I will say that I hung this in the wrong spots. Even after measuring and going through all that, uh, I didn't measure correctly. <laughs> Go figure. But thankfully, uh, this wall is a very forgiving <clears throat> because I made the holes and then I can go ahead and just throw some joint compound right back in those holes and you would never know. Uh, did I do that? No, I just covered it up with a painting and all is good to be honest.
Let's go. I will say too that this canvas was a little hard to hang up since if you notice, um, not only is it three pieces, but it's three pieces of different sizing. Uh, you have the bigger canvas that is one size and then you have two smaller pieces, uh, but together they're not the same size as the big canvas and then you gotta leave the proper amount of spacing. It, it was definitely a huge ordeal, so to figure that out, I basically just took the length of the board I was using, found the center, and then subtracted what the width of the canvas was, plus about an inch between each canvases, um, and then I just kind of figured it out from there. I also wanted to add just a little light above the canvas, so that way it you know, when I felt like it, I could, you know, put the light on the canvas and give it all the focus. Um, I found this little light. I absolutely love it. It, since we have not, we don't have electricity ran up there, I wanted something that was remote or battery operated. Um, well, it's battery operated, but with a remote, uh, that way I didn't have to climb up on a ladder to turn it on every time I wanted to use it. I can just simply press the remote, uh, and it works out so well. This light, also, not only can you do like a cool light setting, but you can also do a warm light setting if that's your vibes. I, I like the cool tones. Um, it makes me happy so uh, Fred went ahead I found where I wanted the light and then Fred went ahead and put the screws in for me um, just because it was kind of hard working with this board and when I was trying to hammer the nails for the pictures I was I was having a heck of a time guys so uh, again Fred stepped in and saved the day Till the stars fade away and your scars don't, your scars don't Say my name, stay with me till the stars fade away and your scars don't, your scars don't hurt Your scars don't hurt Another thing I wanted to add was some curtains. I feel like adding curtains to the space just makes it more homey, um, just gives it more cozy and inviting vibes, if you will. Uh, your girl should have waited to put this up until I had some help. I, it was definitely... I didn't fully think that through when I went to put this up. <laughs> uh, and you'll see my struggles. It was quite the ordeal here. But these are the same uh, curtains and curtain, um, bar, what do you call that? Rod, curtain rod. Um, same curtain rod, same curtains that are throughout the house. I have them in the dining room and the bedroom, and I highly recommend hanging your curtains from the ceiling. It helps to expand or make your ceilings look taller than they actually are. And in this house, we need all the help we can get because these are very short ceilings. I think they're eight foot ceilings. Uh, so putting up your curtains and putting them at the top of the ceiling, like I said, it helps expand that ceiling and make it look taller than it is. Um, and again, I, I just love putting the curtains up. It made the room feel completely different. This is where I started struggling because I was like, oh, I can put these up, no big deal. Um, but, but then I had to figure out how to get the rod all the way across um, without being able to reach all the way across because I'm not 
that tall. Like, I'm not short, but I'm not that tall either. Um, I'm 5'6". Uh, but again, these ceilings are 8 foot tall, and I really had to find a way. So, thankfully, these this rod just kind of screws into the end, and so I was able to reach it across and kind of try to turn the bar to get it started. So it held until I could hurry up and quickly get across. And then I had to attach the middle um, bar holder, and it was it was a whole ordeal, you guys. <laughs> but we got it figured out. I didn't need help. I got it. Um, I just got it the hard way. So uh, do things easier than I did, and and wait till you have help. <laughs> Under the stars, we can sleep under the stars or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars. I do absolutely love these curtain rods, they look like a metal um, piping, and I feel like they just fit the vibes of my house so well. They're a beautiful rubbed bronze color. Um, but now you're probably wondering how I'm going to keep the couch from pushed, being pushed up against them. Well, thankfully we have a ton of wood in the back of the, or in the garage. And so I went ahead and slid a piece behind the couch. I think it's a two by four. I don't know. Um, but I did go ahead and put a piece behind the back of the couch to help it. So that way the curtains do not get squished. Out into the spark. I am so excited to bring to you guys this amazing partnership with Boutique Rugs. Boutique Rugs sent me this gorgeous Brattyville rug. I will definitely make sure that I have linked for you guys. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful. I do have it in the 8x10, but they do offer a variety of sizes. Uh, Boutique Rugs has over 40,000 rugs that vary in style, color, size, and materials. They are high quality rugs hand woven rugs. Um, they do offer machine washable and pet friendly rugs. They are affordable and competitive pricing. They are also offering you guys an additional 5% off of their already low pricing, which is absolutely amazing. Just make sure you use code Mrs. Frazier at checkout. Um, I will definitely make sure I leave all that information down in the description for you guys. And I will have a link down there for you as well. They do offer free shipping also on orders placed within the continu contiguous United States. <laughs> uh, I can't talk today, guys. But anyway, I absolutely love this rug. It is so soft and cozy and just a stunning rug. This rug um, is a variety of grays and browns and tans and beiges just beautiful and perfect for my neutral decor uh just a little tip from tammy when you do get a rug in and you get that little edge that kind of curls up just curl it backwards and it'll flatten out for you but also i absolutely love the idea of stacking rugs or layering rugs and in case you didn't know boutique rugs does offer a beautiful um, variety of faux cowhide rugs that I am so excited to share with you guys. So again, thank you so much Boutique Rugs for partnering with me on today's video. Again, don't forget to use Mrs. Frazier for an additional 5% off. As I said, I uh, did 
just go ahead and use a lot of the same decor that we already had. I'm using the same pillows. Um, I did initially take some away because I wasn't too sure of them, uh, but if you wait just a second, I will show you the very end reveal. I did bring them back. I changed out the clock for the round mirror that we originally had in the living room, but let me go ahead and give you a before pick. Before we did the wall, before I added the gorgeous boutique rug, and here is the after. Oh, I absolutely love it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I definitely feel like it is just so much more inviting, so much more us. Uh, and I just am so happy with how everything came out. Anyway, guys, that's going to be the it for today's video. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Yeah.